Hello everyone and welcome to my beginner nuke tutorial. I love to do training where people create something, where they already do something useful with the software. So we're gonna use the shot from our sci-fi project, which is finally out actually. You can watch it on YouTube, the link will be suggested. So first thing to do when you are working with one monitor, you should change it to large node graph this way you will see nodes better one window of properties will be more than enough for you because uh, one node at a time will be everything your brain can <laughs> comprehend by completing this beginner to advanced nuke course you will complete this shot and as a producer of this project, I'm giving you full permission to use this shot in your showreel. First, we will start with removing this thing from the wall, which is like from another time. This is like 80s. Our sci-fi noir was with setting of 80s. And this is like more modern thing. And that's why it has to be removed out of the shot. So we will learn like tracking, rotoscoping, cleanup, all the stuff you'll need to become a complete CG rocket to jump into the industry and do all the cleanup they will throw at you. So you can earn your first money making movies. In the advanced part of the course we will replace the eyes. And here we will learn a lot more advanced techniques. Uh, you see that the real diodes are like on the glasses but we will need to clean up them and put the eyes inside of his eyes behind the glasses to make a real deal hardcore cyborg eyes instead of this ridiculous diets that production crew left for us to fix on post so it will be a lot more advanced stuff and if while watching this course you start feeling like you understand everything i'm talking about then congratulations you are tough enough to get your first job in the visual effects industry I will reintroduce myself for newcomers. I'm producer, visual effects supervisor and effects PhD mentor. And I've started my YouTube channel because I have a lot of shots in my archive and I don't know why the hell I'm not talking about them. Because I feel like experience have more value when besides using it for yourself, you also are passing it to other people like you. And my name is Kirill Pleshakov. If you try to pronounce it in English, it will be like Kirill, Kirill, <laughs> it's the way the Englishman pronounced my name. So let's do a quick five seconds introduction of a Nukes interface for those who don't know this. So if you are familiar with basics of Nukes interface, you can just skip ahead to the next class. But if you are not, I strongly encourage you to watch this most boring part of the training. You just have to do this once. To quickly change the user interfaces, you can see uh, there's a... Uh, hotkeys for them you, by hitting shift f4 f3 you are changing between the user interfaces and shift f2 is the large node graph not so much you will need for this beginner tutorial the basic things you will need is to create nodes by hitting tab uh, while your mouse is on the node graph you see when your mouse is somewhere else the tab works differently it understands where your mouse is so when you hit tab on your node graph you will get access to all the nuke tools everything you can possibly do here is inside the tab menu these two things are read nodes I have here to create them you can choose them from the tab menu like that where you can choose the file and if you are my patreon subscriber you will have all the project files patreon is my only income right now as I'm trying to change my life by subscribing to it you're getting all the project files and you can chat with me on patreon I'm available anytime so any support is incredibly valuable to me the link to it is in the description below so uh, you can choose the file so you will get the read note like that so next thing you are probably wondering about how the heck will you view footage in the viewer this is done by selecting the read note and hitting one of the numbers of the keyboard which sets the viewers inputs to corresponding node you are selecting so when you've created the read note another thing you can wonder about is uh, why the heck you are playing back and the footage and it is not playing back is maybe because your frame slider range is off there's 
some variants of frame slider range here. One of uh, useful ones is input so that it will set its range to the corresponding read nodes input. For example, if I'll take the another read node here with another frame range here, you see this another frame range of this, you will get the input of that when you will connect your viewer to it. The another way of setting frame slider range is to use the global range which you can set in the project settings which you can access by hitting S on the keyboard while your mouse is on the node grab. This way your properties tab will open it and you can set it manually here for example to the frame range of this read node here. And let's also set the format while we are here. The default format for the bounding boxes to the format of our source footage. It will automatically appear under all the formats available when you will import it 2500 by 1318. This is the format of our shots. So change the format to this in the project settings and you are ready to go. So you see, I'm now uh, trying to play back uh, this uh, read node with the global range of this read node but until I will like get my slider to frame which is the frame in range of this read node I can't play it back in the visible range of the frame slider so I should change it to input or change it to global and change the global frame range to the frame range of my read node with which I will be working. Usually the global frame range should be the range of your main read node, of your main sequence with which you're gonna work. I mean you will have some read nodes of textures or stuff but this global frame range should be the range of your main sequence with which you're gonna work of your source footage. The other way to quickly create the read node is by hitting the R on the node graph and it will instantly open the file browser. We can import anything from, you know, JPEGs to cinema camera footages. I can, can uh, import red files here. Supports a lot of formats. Everything you need. Also processes everything in 32-bit mode, like in After Effects 32-bit mode is optional, but in Nuke it always processes everything in 32-bit mode, so maximum color depth. So you can see the properties of the nodes here. If you create like a blur node hitting B on the keyboard, you'll get its properties instantly. And if you set this amount of uh, properties in the properties tab to 3, you will see that you will get the blur node and read node here stacked like that, and usually you will use the properties of the node you are selecting in the node graph to understand what is happening here. You're blurring everything like that. See, the blur node works now. First thing to do is to load up the uh, sequence. So inside of uh, project files folder, there is a folder with the shot name and inside of it, there is an in folder and there is a EXR sequence, which you can load up connect the viewer to it by hitting one of the numbers on the keyboard. To zoom and pan you can use the middle mouse button here and you can hit H to fit up to 100% like that. And that's basically it. As you've loaded the source footage from the in folder, the next thing you'll do is save the project. The project is being saved to the shot folder. You will find it in the project files, into the work folder, into your department folder. Cleanup is your current department. Go inside of it, go inside of project folders, copy the shot name, paste it into the name of the project, put underscore or dot to enter your department inside of the shot name and version of the script. And this will save the nuke script into this directory. If you hit save, you can see that it is there now. Every 30 seconds, nuke will autosave your script into the separate file into this same directory and you can always restore it when it is needed and it will also overwrite it every 30 seconds when you don't need it. You will understand when you will get more experience. 
Thank you so much for watching. By the way, if I'm talking too slowly to you, you always can use the option of YouTube player to speed the video up or slow it down if you feel like it and watch it again. My name is Kirill Plashakov. I'll see you in the next class when we will start tracking things to, to prepare the motion tracking data to our cleanup. The Patreon link to the project files is in the description and I'm always in touch in the Patreon messages and sometimes in the comments of the YouTube. So feel free to ask any questions, I will answer to all of them. I'll see you in the next class.